What would be all Resident 47 returning again for another album review? This is going to be a review on my favorite album of 2022 so far. Do this because I just got the physical dropped in on me today. And the album is Benny the Butcher's Town Talk 4, released on March 11th. I'll give a brief description on Benny's career up to this point. He's a rapper from Buffalo, New York, part of the Griselda crew and Griselda Records. And his own crew, Black Soprano family. He got started in the mid 2000s, like when the mixtape era was like the shit. Like he dropped his debut mixtape in 04, which is Tan Talk, or Tan Talk One, and then he dropped uh, like a whole bunch of other tapes from that point into like 09 or maybe even later. He dropped like Tan Talk Two, which I think was like 06. I want to say. I don't think if the first one's on YouTube, but Tan Talk Two is. And then he also dropped another tape called was well, Chains Bomb, where he went by uh, Two Chains Benny Main. And then uh, like um. Like, after a while, like, um, he went silent, and that was, like, the first part of his career. And then the second part of his career started up in 2015 when he started appearing on, like, West Side Guns, Hitler, Where Hermes 3, and Conway's Reject 2 EP on the song Beloved with Makami. And then he appeared again on West Side's Fly God album, the song Shower Shoe Lords. And since then, he did, like, a lot more appearances on their albums, and then... The fall of 2017, he officially got signed to Griselda Records, then dropped his label debut, Butcher on Steroids, which was um, hosted by DJ Green Lantern. It was uh, November 2017 that was dropped. And then he dropped, like, rap classics. He's dropped a lot of classics since then, like, Tana Talk 3, which is my favorite album of his, The Plugs I Met, Burn It Proof, which is underrated, and A Friend of Ours, which is also underrated, and a whole lot of others since then. But it was around the Pleasant Met era when he announced this album. And it originally was going to be a double disc, Tana Tux 4 and 5. But as time went on, news about the album kind of went silent. Started picking up like by the fall of 2021. He was officially working on the album. And then in the late January of this month, year, like on the 28th, he dropped the first single on this album, Johnny Peace Caddy. And shortly after that, March 11th, the full album was out. So I'll go through the artwork. That is the cover. Fucking dope. I love that. This is a family picture of Machine Gun Black, which is Benny's brother that got killed in 06. Benny himself. And then West Side Gun. And if y'all don't know, Machine Gun Black is also the baby that appears on Town Talk 3. That is not Benny, that is Machine Gun Black. And the picture they use for this cover... It's also the track list from Town Talk 3, so you can put those side by side. See that? See how they flip that? There's a spine right there, pretty simple. Track list, I believe that is the house Benny grew up on in on Montana Ave. Put it up. There's your disc art. The Benny's part of the portrait. And then the credits. There you go. Alright, that's all there is to it, artwork wise. Get down to breaking the down the album. Alright. Track one, Johnny P's Caddy, featuring J. Cole produced by Alchemist. This is a perfect sign into the album. Begins with Benny talking about like his rags to riches story. They wanna know what I brought to Griselda. I say validity. They asking me what kind of work y'all put in it. I'm like, what didn't we? Besides Connor West telling me who else I got to respect, because I'm kind of perplexed about the time I got my respect. Love that. And I love how J. Cole picks up on that. He does like that about the time I got my respect. And then he comes in with some killer punchlines in his verse. On the night I was born, the rain was pouring. God was crying, lightning struck. Power out of sparks was flying. I love the imagery on there. J. Cole definitely held his, held his own against Benny. But my favorite verse still has to go to the butcher. And Alchemist killed the beat too. I love that soulful production. And it bangs in the system. There's also a video for this song out too. I'll have all the music videos in the description. So that's the first track, Johnny Peace Caddy. And then track two is Back 2X or Back Back. Featuring Stuff Got Cooks produced by Derringer and Beat Butcher. Going to some darker territory right away. This is a highlight on the album for me. 
I fucking love that beat with like the with like that piano and the guitars. Like the fucking muffled drums. Love it. Classic Griselda sound. Benny just talking his shit on this song. Where he says, I went and spent another buck on some water I call it a Grammy. Dope as fuck. Just simple wordplay, but very effective. And then fucking Stolby kills the chorus, you know. You brought it back, back. Dropped it in the pot, it came back, back. Came on the way back. I bent my shoe up in the corner, Betty back, back. I love that chorus. And Stove God himself murders this song. He has my favorite verse. All them kilos came stamped with a balloon. It's time to party. Driving sixes in the sun with that rocket. I think I'm Barkley. And I am bring a chip home. Bitch, I brought a brick home. Did it off the flip phone. Had the feds in there tiptoeing. Fucking love that. The wordplay, the, like, the rhyme scheme. Oh, that's fucking crazy. It's one of my favorite rappers out now. His album with Rock Marciano, Reasonable Drought. is a classic already. We need that Stove Jesus album because... He did put out another album last year, but it was selling it for like a fucking million dollars, so... Ain't no way we're gonna hear that. But you know what? Um, just, whenever Soap Jesus comes out, it's gonna be fucking amazing. And I love his verse on here. It's one of his best moments so far, in my opinion. Love the beat. Fucking killer song. And then... It gets even darker with the third track, Super Plug, produced by Alchemist. Also another highlight. Very dark beat with the haunting pianos. I love how um, Alchemist has this classic ident right before the beat drops. I can picture Benny on like Montana Ave in like a misty winter blizzard, just putting out, just having a stack of bricks ready to put in work. And the story he tells here are just that. Caught my first case and had him move into my pop's house. Benny stopped shit. I stashed work in my pop's couch. That same year they kicked me out of school. No, I dropped out. Another case I chopped out. A lawyer and I copped out. Oh shit, I've been on since like the old clips. 16 hour road trip for the whole brick. Vivid lyrics, tight rhyme scheme. I love how detailed he is with this shit. It's a textbook Benny Uncle Al track. Love it. And then track four is another Alchemist track. Weekend in the Paris, produced by Bol um, Future and Boldy James. Some more like a, like some chipmunk soul shit. It's no drums, just a sample. I love how he pitched the vote sample up and chopped it up. It's so fucking dope. You know, Benny raps about moving from the drug game to the rap game in his verse. Where he says, uh, They met on back, rapping about dope again. Never mind me. The pressure from my pen made them rap a little better, finally. You know, I hope these Griselda whiners are happy he's doing this type of grimy shit again. Because his um, last two albums, like Plugs I Met 2 and Burn to Proof, those were almost shit canned. I love those albums personally. I think they just need to get some more fucking respect. It shows, definitely shows his versatility. And Bully picks up and goes on about the stress that, that success brings in his verse. And he says, Feel like I've been betrayed by my silhouette. Simple but effective. Love how that line sounds. My favorite verse is Benny, but like just like a small Adam. But Bully definitely delivered the goods. And then after that, we go to what I would say is one of the best, best songs in Benny's career. Not just up to this point, like ever. Ten more crack of mammoths, featuring Puff Daddy, produced by Darren Dre Beat Butcher. You can tell, can't tell from the title. This is a modern nice sequel to the Notorious B.I.G.'s Ten Crack of Mammoths song from Life After Death. He went in orders from one to ten, and now Benny's gonna follow it up, going backwards twenty to eleven. He got the green light from Puffy and D DJ Premier to do this. You know, he did Frank White a big service on this one. These new commandments he puts in are very well detailed. No, the only thing I want to say is this. I wish Puffy was either mixed down his vocals or just cut him out the song completely. You know, I know like on Life After Death, he was doing a lot of shit talking to. But on this song, he's just like mixed so loud. Like sometimes it'll overlap Benny's rapping. And that's where it kind of comes a little problem for me. But other than that, it's an amazing song. A couple of my favorite commandments include like the 17th one. Take care of the people around you. Basically, yo, use that drug money to support your family and not just yourself. Also, the um, commandment number 11, the first chance you get, you better get out this shit. Basically saying you're risking your freedom with this to work towards a better life. So don't be stupid and stay in it. But my favorite commandment is number 13. 13 tricky, big couldn't even approach it. When he was slinging a totem, this wasn't even the focus. No social media posting. 
greedy emotions. You chase fame and not money. That's broke shit. Y'all be on whole shit. Like tell them, de tell them the dealers don't stack, post your stack of supply. Cause that's the quickest way to get locked up or robbed. You know, moving sounds like big second commandment said basically. Like I said, one of Benny's best moments as an artist. Derringer beat Butcher kill the beat. The commandments are just as detailed as Biggie's were. This also has a video which is also very well done. I love it. He actually goes to like Bed Style where Biggie grew up. He likes rapping on like um the porch of the house he he grew up in. He's like rapping on the Brooklyn Bridge and shit like that. It's, it's a great move. It's a great video. Yeah, it basically is a movie, I would say. And then after that, things kind of chill out with the Sith track, Tyson vs. Ali, featuring Conway the Machine, produced by Derringer. Great song. This beat is more like, has like a cosmic late night feel with those spaced out uh, keyboards. What Benny talks about on this song like has to be addressed with like the climate of social media nowadays. He has to say it. Very important. Talking about how these fucking internet retards go online, go on Twitter, and compare everything in existence just for the the sake of their own amusement, just for the sake of just talking, not only, not even with like a purpose or anything. And he touches on that in this song where he says like, "So confusing, y'all compare two rappers from the same movement only for y'all amusement. It's funny me, y'all do it. Truth is, while well, I'm killing this shit, coming we're somewhere rooting." He's just saying he's not swaying all the comparisons because. He knows he's got love from Conway and Westside Gun till death. And, you know, Conway kills his verse too, where he says, like, Westside Derringer, me and Benny, y'all look at the illest four that y'all seen in 10 years or more. Like, I've been saying this for a, like a minute online. Don't compete with Griselda because they're impossible to beat. Like, like people, like, um, if you were rapping in the 90s, you wouldn't try to, try to beat Wu, would you? I wouldn't think so. Like, I know rap's kind of pet of a sport, but there's just some artists you can't fuck with. And Griselda is, like, one of those. Like, definitely nowadays. And, like, great, great t topic on this song. I, lo I love the shit he talked about. Like, some rap people take music for politics, which is stupid. But anyways, great song. We'll go over to track 7 now. Uncle Bun, featuring 38 Special, produced by Derringer. This is Benny and his BSF uh, c companion, 38 Special, going back and forth. The song is named after the UJK member Bun B. His nickname is Uncle Bun. Well, okay, my thing is, I fuck with this song. But the 38 Spice feature it was just a loss for me. He did, he kills it lyrically, I'll give him that. He says fucking, uh, two clips, that's enough shots for you and your alter ego. But what makes his verse a miss for me is his voice. That, like, that kind of voice I just can't fuck with. You know, even, even if he is dope lyrically, I just, not something I'm into. And that fucking voice he tries to do around like 52 seconds in throughout. Oh god. But Benny saved the day, he kills his verses. And Benny, and especially if he kills it too, I want to reiterate that. And I don't skip this song, I still listen to it. So Uncle Bun, still a dope song. And then we go to track 8 Thalia's Revenge, produced by Alchemist. Named after his uh, homeboy Thalia, that he's one of his best friends in real life. This track's dope as fuck. The flow Benny uses here is amazing. Alchemist dropped a really dope beat. I love the fanfare horns they used. And, uh... The flow Benny uses is fucking amazing. Like, it's not for the camera. I fed her over a banister. I really chopped all night. Stamina. Surviving up Dutchess and sandwiches. Like, that... That, oh, that flow is fucking perfect. I started there from nothing. Fans choosy about the artists I fuck with. Too successful of them all of a sudden. They gon' blame on all of this money. The way he delivered that... And the flow he used is fucking perfect. You know, I love the chorus, you know. City, City introduced me to the game. Doug gave me my first square. Where showed me the formula, but I'm gonna make my own self a millionaire. This is how an MC does rap. You can't do this shit if you don't have more than one flow or more than one style of rapping. It gotta be versatile. And Benny definitely has that. Then we go to track 9, Billy Joe, produced by Alchemist again. I'd say this is one of the most personal tracks on the album. Like, the whole album is personal, but this is, like, one of the very per personal tracks. Benny, um, going, talk about how he's going from fiend snitching on him and co facing court cases to buying planes and property. Like, you know the Rex Richards kind of song, but just with himself. Damn, I counted out half a million with my eyes closed. Because this year, I feel like I'm 99, hove. You know, I love that. Like, it's a... Illusion to that track 97 hole from Tantalk 3. I love how 
you know, two, you record the song two years later, so you added two years on to that 97 Hope, 99 Hope, you, 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 you get it. But the production is great too, very dreary sample, and again, makes you feel like you're on Montana Ave with Benny, with a whole stack of bricks, just ready to get rich and shit. So, I'll get, I'll get a hit of water really quick, then we'll go to the 10th track. Alright, track 10, Guerrero, featuring Westside Gun, produced by Derringer and Beat Butcher. Knowing Westside, I think this track might have been named after Eddie Guerrero. He does, he has a lot of tracks named after wrestlers. Even if they're on, even like on other people's albums. This is another really dope, dope track, no other way to put it really. Back to Derringer and Beat Butcher production. The beat here is like really futuristic. And Benny fucked this track up, you know. He name drops pretty much every song on Tan Talk 3 and Burden to Proof in some very clever ways. Like on what he says, like, um... <clears throat> Who are you? I'm Scarface vs. Sosa on both sides. No, Scarface vs. Sosa Part 2. Um, Who are you? Those tracks in Tan Talk 3. And then, uh... This one where you, like, name drops Burden to Proof tracks is fucking crazy. I'm famous... So they wonder where I would go on that one-way flight. One line, three tracks named fucking crazy. A-class lyricism right there. One of his best verses in his career, I'll say. West, West Side's verse was pretty short, but he made the most of it. You know, he's like, Linda Sniff line did the robot. Tech classic Fly God type lines right there. Guerrero's a fucking really good, so great song. I love it a lot. Then we're going on to the penultimate track, 11, Boss of Brick Nick, produced by Alchemist. But he talks some of his best shit ever on here. Killer Braggadocia track. He uses almost the whole beat for his raps, like there's no time wasted here. Al's beat has like a dirty summertime feel to it. There's a lot of dope one-liners in here, but I'll pick just a couple. Got a warning, I'll be in Lewisburg right now if they search me. That, I pop for that because that's also the name of the town I live in. But the way, um, I think the way he's referencing is spelled different. I think it's like a jail in Buffalo or something. But I love that line. And, uh, the feds watch me get an M on TV like I'm Carson Daly. <sighs> Killer. No explanation needed on that one. This track also has a video. I'll put that in the description. Uncle Bun also has a video I forgot to mention. So, that's Bust of Brick Nick. And then we go to the sign up track 12, Mr. Chow Hall, produced by Alchemist. I actually did not know this, but, um, in the credits it says this track was co-written by Westside Gun. It even says featuring Westside Gun, but on the actual song he doesn't appear vocally. But it's a short, sweet song. The beat is, like, slow and dark. Benny discusses, like, the success one more time. And also discusses the label politics. And there's lyrics blinked out, blinked out here. And it's basically, like, how Def Jam's deal with him was, like, ten times more than... His shady deal. Well, um, like, what's on Khan's shady deal? And... They also, like, um, there's also a line where he says, like, that's why they told me not to do that 360 deal with Paul. But 360 deal is blanked out. Like, the full lyrics are on Rap Genius. But, um... Probably to center that so they wouldn't have burning your bridges. So, that, yeah, you got that right there. But then he says, uh... They say Wes is the brains and Benny is the star. Conway the city with the bars, but... I couldn't agree more. That's a reference to um, the 6.30 tip-off song from La Machina, Conway's album. I love how the song ends to like Alchemist down pitches the beat and just even slower and more brooding. Very dope closer. Fucking great song. And in a nutshell, Town Talk 4 is a perfect follow-up to Town Talk 3 in every single element. From the lyrics, to the artwork, to the production, the sequencing, the features, and where they're placed at. All perfect. Like, some of these songs could be on Ten Talk 3. Like, you, there wouldn't even be any difference. You couldn't even, wouldn't be able to tell. If, unless you, like, listen to his voice perfect, clearly, but... Anyways, I love this album. It's fucking... It's album of the year, like I said. This is one of the... This part, yes, it's my second favorite Benny album of all time. I'll put it like that. Right after Tanner Talk 3. And Darren Dream, Beat Butcher, Alchemist, all body the production. And Benny comes through with some very li vivid, detailed drug raps. In my opinion, I think is one of the best at doing this shit. Like, up there with, like, Raekwon on Cuban Links, Nas and It Was Written. 
Hov and Reasonable Doubt, and even Biggie on Life After Death. So, fucking classic album, like, soon to be classic, I'll say. And my rating on this album, I'll give it like a, I'll give it a four and a half out of five. Very, very, very dope fucking album. And my top three songs, I'll say number three, Super Plug. Number two, Ten More Commandments. And uh, number one, Back to X. And that's going to do it for this review. Thank y'all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications, all that shit so you don't miss out on anything. And until then, I'm out of here.